Mr. Impossible could do the most amazing things. For instance, he could jump over a house. Impossible. And Mr. Impossible could make himself invisible. All he had to do was to stand there and think about becoming invisible, and he became invisible. Impossible. And Mr. Impossible could fly. All he had to do was stand there and flap his arms about, and off he flew. Impossible. He lived in an impossible-looking house. Have you ever seen a house in such an impossible place? Of course not. One day, he was out walking in the woods when he met a boy called William. William was on his way to school. Hello there, said Mr. Impossible. Hello, said William. I'm William. I'm impossible. Really, said William. Sure am, smiled Mr. Impossible. Could you do impossible things, asked William. Haven't come across anything I couldn't do. William thought. Can you climb up that tree, he asked, pointing to the biggest tree in the wood. Oh, I can do better than that, replied Mr. Impossible. I can walk up that tree. And he did. William thought again. Can you, can you stand on one hand? He asked. Oh, I can do better than that, replied Mr. Impossible. I can stand on no hands. And he did. That's impossible, cried William. Sure is, replied Mr. Impossible. Then William remembered that he was on his way to school. Why don't you come with me, he asked. But uh, I, I've never been to a school before. Then it's time you did, replied William. Come on. William and Mr. Impossible sat at the back of William's classroom with all the other children. The teacher came in, but didn't notice that there was somebody extra in his class that morning. Morning, children, he said. I have a very difficult sum for you to do today. It will take you most of the morning to work out the answer. And he wrote the sum on the blackboard. It really was the most difficult sum William had ever seen in his whole life of adding up and taking away and multiplications and divisions and other things William didn't enjoy. The teacher was right. It would indeed take up most of the morning to work out the answer, if not most of the afternoon as well. Mr. Impossible whispered in William's ear. William put up his hand. Yes, William, said the teacher. Is there something about the sum that you don't understand? Please, sir, said William, is the answer 23? Teacher was very, absolutely, totally, completely amazed. How did you work out the sum so quickly? He gasped. It's impossible. Ain't nothing impossible, mister, said Mr. Impossible from the back of the class and stood up. Well, I never did, exclaimed the teacher. After that, Mr. Impossible spent all day at the school. He showed the teacher how he could read a book upside down. But that's impossible, said the children who were watching. Yes, sir, said Mr. Impossible. Then William asked Mr. Impossible if he'd like to play in the school football match. Oh, we sure would, replied Mr. Impossible, but I ain't never played football before. Don't you know what he did? He kicked the football so high into the air 
that when it came down, it had snow on it. Impossible. Then it was time to go home. Mr. Impossible said goodbye to all the people at school, and then he said goodbye to William. Goodbye, Mr. Impossible, said William. So long, William, said Mr. Impossible. He just disappeared. William rubbed his eyes and went home. William's mother and father were waiting for him. Hello, William, they said. Do you have a good day at school? Yes, he replied. And I met someone who can do anything in the world. Oh, oh, oh. oh really, William? They both laughed. <laughs> You're impossible. William smiled and went inside. And a hundred miles away, a small figure was listening to what William's mother and father were saying. And then he went to sleep. Standing on his head. And we all know that that is downright impossible. Yes, sir. <laughs>